Hi everyone, let's talk about what women expect from men. Men and women have completely different approaches to finding a spouse, with men seeking to prove themselves and their accomplishments and relying on female affirmation to acknowledge the value they've built in themselves. Women have long believed that they are entitled to the worth that only a man can provide and have developed to demand it. Whereas males who have been brainwashed into believing that they are hunting for soulmates and spiritually compatible characteristics have already decided to follow a life of leisure and manipulation, and whoever happens to be the hapless victim of this scam is unimportant. In her equation, the guy is the sole interchangeable variable around which he may build his existence. He's discovered a diamond in the rough in the form of a precious woman, and she demands the man to conform to her. A crafty lady would have her guy believe his fantasies are being fulfilled while she reaps the benefits of his achievement. She let him play the patriarch, knowing full well that both her convenience and any significant decisions that would put her in an uncomfortable position were totally within her control. This sneaky woman would be the true ruler of the roost. One could argue that this is the most forgiving alternative because the man can at least believe in his fantasy. In comparison to the more crude and forthright women who just exert their control by baser feminine manipulation tactics, particularly humiliation, he can at least live quietly in the fiction of male authority. This is a weak argument because none of the alternatives allow for mercy. Living a lie is a different kind of torment, because all of that potential is squandered without even the slightest realization of what that entrapped man could have become instead of happily walking into servitude for his weaker master, to whom he owes all happiness, all purpose, all guidance, and all desires he bestows upon her. In exchange, she inspects the gift she's been given casually and rapidly learns to sort through all of the bits she can't utilize, unwrapping the gift of the man's soul to get to the base of her needs. Anything that does not immediately benefit her is thrown away, according to the part where she can actually use it. Simply seen as glorified wrapping paper for what she really wanted, the welfare state divorce courts and the spread of feminist propaganda have demonstrated that this expectation may be delivered by a variety of sources. None of them are permanent or advantageous to her in the long run, but one learns not to look a gift horse in the mouth, and women have long since learned to ride that horse. Whatever decision she makes, she will expect servitude and will get her way. Whether it's at the price of a weak, desperate man who doesn't recognize his own worth as a man, or the self-actualized man held prisoner by a government trying to placate the demands of entitled and corrupted women. Now there's a problem. How many subservient men would willingly walk into that trap if they were made aware of the degree of their servitude? Your answer to this question will lead to a slew of other questions about why things are the way they are, as well as a slew of reasons why they will never change. Some men, feeling they can overcome the odds, will engage and, once they realize their errors, will be enslaved for the rest of their lives. Some men, eager for a taste of what a life with a purpose could be like, willingly put their lives on the line for women to bestow upon them the modest purpose of a workhorse, something bigger than he ever dreamed of, since he had never dreamed at all. Some men just refuse to listen, instead relying on their destructive hedonistic inclinations to choose the easy road rather than the lengthy and winding path of introspection and contemplation. When such a master encounters a guy who has liberated himself from the urge to be her slave, he may have an enticing aura about him that is not easily discovered. She may even attempt to tame him, reducing this proud man to a lowly servant, a living testament to her power and a monument to her vanity just as she deduced the equation of a decadent woman where the outcome was predetermined and all that was required was a nameless man to fill the role of the producer, she now only has one option. Defiance at the notion of siphoning off time resources and his own life, defiance at the prospect of losing everything he has worked for, and defiance at the prospect of ever abandoning himself for anybody or anything else. So that's it for today guys, I'll see you later.